When you feel as low as the bottom of a well, you can't get out of the mood. Do something to perk yourself up. Change your attitude. Give a tuck to your tie. Put a crease in your pants. If you want to really feel fine, give your shoes a shine. When there's a shine on your shoes, there's melody in your heart. What a singable happy feeling. A wonderful way to start to face the world every day. With the dee da dee da da little melody that is making worrying world go by when you walk down the street with a happy-go-lucky beat. You'll find a lot of what I'm repeating when there's a shine on your shoes. There's a melody in your heart. What a wonderful way to start the day. folks are having a great start to your day. I am, and I'm just pulling on my shoes, and they, in fact, happen to be shiny today. These are my shiny fit flops. Uh, for those of you that have been to the senior center, you know they are my go-to shoes in the summertime. I have them in three colors, four colors, I think. Anyway, uh, Gwen Pace introduced me to Fit Flops a few years back, and when I slip these on, they not only feel good, but then since they look sparkly, they make me feel good inside. And isn't that a crazy thought to think shoes make you feel good? But I have to admit, they do me. As I've been pondering this shoe idea this week, I did a little research. And you've all heard the phrase, two left feet. Does anybody know where that came from? I didn't. But as I was looking, I found that it wasn't until 1818 that there was a left and a right shoe. They were all made straight. Nobody was thinking about comfort when that was the case. Just like probably nobody was really thinking about comfortable when they designed this shoe. This is one of my absolutely favorite show shoes that I ever purchased as far as looks go. They just were so pretty and when I put them on in the Macy's shoe department and I looked in the mirror, I looked at them forwards, I looked at them sideways, I looked at them from the back, I thought these shoes looked great on me. So I bought them, I packed them away and did a show a few nights later put them on, started to walk out on stage and thought, oh my gosh, I can't walk in these things. This body was not made to parade around a stage on silhouette heels. So I made it through the show, standing still pretty much and uh, put them back in the closet and haven't had them out since. Uh, I think it's probably time to pass those on to Gracie May especially since I've already replaced them. Let's see, where's that other one? Oh, with this, still nice and shiny with a much more manageable heel. You know, our friend Cindy Miller explains this whole thing about shoes perfectly. A love-hate relationship is a shoe-in for women and I might add a few men that I know too. <laughs> it's, 
It's the ultimate in love-hate relationships. I'm talking about a best friend, worst enemy type of situation. It begins as love and takes a long time to turn. It starts the moment that baby girls have those black leather patent leather shoes strapped on them for the first time. If we could talk, we would say, I really wanted something with a heel. This desire for high heels is prominent in our lives right up until that magic moment when mom says, okay, you can have heels. It comes earlier and earlier compared to when I was a child. Playing dress up in mom's clothes was as close as I got for a long time. Once we were old enough to wear those wonderful shoes with heels, we had to have a pair or two for every outfit. Some really wild one, ones are a necessity for those times we feel a little daring. In my 20s, I could walk a mile in high heels and not feel uncomfortable. I didn't feel dressed for work without the high heels. A red pair of heels was a real good mood lifter. Who can feel down when you're pairing, wearing a pair of red high heels? Somewhere around my early 40s, I fell in love with two-inch heels. These may have come with a message something like, I love my comfort. It did not take much to convince me that these were as dressy as the higher heels. It's all a matter of perspective. Even though you are in love with the two inch heels, you occasionally put on a pair of the really high heels for special occasions, at least for a few years. In your fifties, you discover that flats aren't all that bad. <laughs> at first you wear them with slacks and then one day you decide they really don't look all that bad with dresses. In your mind, they're really kind of dressy. Again, it's all a matter of perspective. While I was struggling with whether to wear two inch heels or flats, I saw the younger set wearing what I would call combat boots with their dresses. This made me feel really dressed up in my flats. At the same time, I was just a little jealous of the obvious comfort that their combat boots provided. When I was a little girl, my grandmother and other old ladies wore sandal type shoes with big, fat, clunky heels. This type of shoe is now worn as a fashion shoe, but not by me. This type of shoe will forever be a sign in my mind of old age. After a while, even flats are uncomfortable and I just can't wait to get home and put on my sneakers or my house slippers. From flats, I progressed to the point where Oxford tie shoes became acceptable with slacks. Of course, I need these in a few basic colors also. Now I've come full circle, back to where I started. The infatuation is over and comfort takes priority. Those high heels remained in the back of the closet for a few years and it took a while to throw them away. Has anybody seen my sneakers? <laughs> How true, Cindy. How true. Some of my earliest memories can are remembering going down to LS Airs downtown with my Aunt Corrine. Aunt Corrine was my great aunt. She didn't have any kids and she loved to take me shopping. And we'd go down to LS Airs, I believe it was downstairs. And, and there was a special little place you climbed up on and set and the lady came and measured your foot. And I remember those first shiny black Mary Janes that I got for Christmas. And then we always would go back uh, around Easter time and I'd get white patent leather shoes and they'd measure and, and then Aunt Corrine and I would run upstairs to the LS Airs tea room where I got to take something from the treasure chest. And oh, that's, see, earliest memories have to do with shoes. Uh, one pair of shoes that every little girl has dreamed about for a long, long time were those ruby red slippers worn by Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz. 
Did you know that they sold in 2000, I believe, for $660,000? I've bought some shoes that I probably paid too much for, but nothing like that. <laughs> As I got a little older, Mom and I would venture out to Eastgate Shopping Center. Remember when Eastgate was new on the east side of town and it was the place to shop? And there was a store that my Aunt Annie Myers worked at, Tom McCann Shoe Store. So we frequented Tom McCann's while Aunt Annie was still an employee there. But somehow we always managed to end up back in Shelbyville, where? To Hub Shoe Store. That's right. I remember getting my first pair of sneakers, red ball jets made by Keds, remember? And you know why they were called sneakers? I didn't know this. They were the first shoe with rubber soles and the advertising guy said, well, you could sneak up on somebody in these. So hence the word sneakers that still holds true today. My dad would buy his work shoes at Hubs, and they were always pretty expensive, even back then. He'd have them resold every couple of years or so, and he'd wear those wonderful shoes forever. And mom would get hers there because she had a narrow foot, and it was hard to go find narrow shoes any place. Uh, when I was in junior high school, that's when I got those first heels. And I remember them. My mom just about had a fit. But even in junior high, I was wearing a size 9 shoe, and there were no more little girl shoes. They had a nice, chunky, uh, brown wooden heel on them. And, oh, I felt so special that first day of junior high, wearing those shoes. I can see the dress now. As I think about it, though, those shoes looked a little bit probably like the ones that came off of the Mayflower with the big buckle on the front and kind of kind of clunky, but I loved those shoes. And I remember at Christmas time going by the window at Hubs and they had a pair of black go-go boots with embroidered flowers all the way up the side. They were so pretty. And I had a coat that had embroidery down the front of it. And I told mom, I have to have those, please, please for Christmas. And I got those shoes, boots, go-go boots for Christmas. I loved them, I did. When I was a sophomore in high school, I finally was getting a little bit of a taste of what the future might look like because Imogene Schaffner insisted that all of us girls in the show choir head down to Hubs to get fitted for our show choir shoes. We had long navy blue dresses that year and we were all to have navy blue pumps with about an inch and a half heel. And all of us girls thought those were really old lady shoes. It is funny, as Cindy says, how it all comes full circle. In fact, I just bought another pair that look an awful lot like those navy boot pumps from almost 50 years ago. I have a new pair in my closet, so. Let's go visit a few friends today and talk to them about shoes and uh, see what kind of, uh, what kind of ideas they might have about how shoes have been a part of their lives and maybe they'll have some interesting stories for us. They always do. Well, friends, I traveled from my house down to near London and look at this beautiful setting. I wanted to show you this pretty house that we're going to and all of these beautiful flowers. Remember, I'm trying to make it a surprise where we're heading today. So I'm gonna go down this way so you don't see the car, just in case you recognize it. Look at this beautiful backyard. And I am going to be joining this friend on her porch today. And if we wonder what she has been doing, we don't have to look far to find out exactly what she has been doing on her time off. Well, looky there, there's Tootie Fisher. Oh, Tootie, I wanted everybody to see all of your beautiful, 
I'll go out by the barn too, I promise. Look at this, folks. Is it not just gorgeous? She wants me to show you everything out by the barn. She's got pretty flowers too. I'll see the zinnias, yes. Oh, yes. Looky here, around her flagpole. Aren't they gorgeous? Just beautiful. Oh, as long as I have known Tootie, she has loved flowers and she has spent hours and hours in her yard. I need to get her and Dawn together sometime to chat. Look there, her little family of ducks. How pretty. And over here, the cone flowers. Oh, it's just absolutely beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Looky there. Her little girl. Her owl to scare off things. And there's her sign. This is where we are at today. We are on Fisher Road. Right off the road into London. How pretty. I'm glad Tootie allowed us to look at all of her pretties. And there's her pretty daughter too. I think I'll go in and chat with them for a while. Well, we have come into Tootie's lovely screened in back porch where I can hear her birds singing and still see all of her gorgeous flowers here. And uh, we're gonna have a chat, not just with Tootie, but with her daughter and my friend Caroline. So it's great to be here today. Thank you for letting me come and talk to you a bit. And tell me Tootie, besides doing your lovely gardening that you've done for as long as I can ever remember, uh, what, what else have you been doing to keep busy while we've been kind of stuck in the past few months? Well, I spend a lot of time uh, embroidering and uh, playing on Facebook and working in the yard. Um, Caroline and I do a lot of running around together and uh, just seem to keep busy. Betty and I do Meals on Wheels uh, two, weekend, two weeks out of the month. And, um, so, and we really enjoy that. And that keeps me going all the time. <laughs> yep. When we keep on giving, it seems like we keep on going, don't we? Right. That's just the way it is. Well, I, I shared with you that we were going to talk about shoes today. And I can remember from my childhood that Tootie always liked pretty shoes. But I'm going to ask you two girls some questions about shoes. And let's see, a little shoe quiz, if you will. All right. So the first question is, how many pairs of shoes does the average woman own? You got a guess? I'd say 25. Got a guess, Caroline? Average American woman? Uh-huh. I'd say 30 or more. 19. Oh. I was a little surprised, too, that the number was so low. But, oh, well. Uh, this is a true or false question. Almost all women wear shoes that are a size or even two sizes smaller than what they ought to be. Is that true or false? I'd say false. I'd say false. Mm, not from this survey. 88% of women admitted to wearing shoes that were too small for their feet. I have to admit, I have a few of those that I think, oh, I can wear them for an hour or two, that probably a half size bigger might have done it for me. So. Now, I have a pair of shoes down here that are only wearable with pantyhose. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that too. Right, no socks, no socks. So, well, what is the average size in 2020 for the American woman? The average size they wear? I'd say seven and a half. I'd say eight. Eight wide, you girls were close on that. You know, in the, at the turn of the century, the average shoe size was 3.5 or four. I think, I think Tiffany wore that size when she was in first grade. <laughs> You know, it's and, and then in the 1960s, it was six and a half or sevens. So that was, that was the of, cute sizes. Yes, so. that was the cute sizes. Yeah. That's right. That was the cute sizes. So, um, okay. And my last question, the very first stiletto heel, those tall, thin heels, 
Who was that worn by? The very first one was an American starlet in the 1950s, and the shoe was made by Salvatore Fergum Fergamo. Yes, Ferragamo. It was made out of alligator skin. Marilyn Monroe. Very good, Trudy. Yes, it was. It was Marilyn Monroe. And the interesting thing about that little fact was it was only three inches, which is really short for a stiletto heel in nowadays. So mm -hmm. those were kind of some fun, fun shoe facts. Well, both of you girls have some cool shoes laid out here. Would you like to tell me a little bit about these shoes? What well, do you got there, Tootie? These are my old granny shoes that I wear now. Yeah. My heels. <laughs> Hold them up high so we can see them. I can't uh, wear high heels anymore. <laughs> I'll bet that every woman in the senior center has a pair at home that look like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I always favor gold. You probably knew that. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I like my gold shoes, and I can still wear these. That's a good thing. And then, of course, these. Uh, I wear these to work in the yard, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me about the history about these shoes. Well, these came from Holland. These came from Holland, Michigan. And what's your connection with Holland? Well, my parents were both from Holland. And uh -huh. my dad came over here when he was 16, and my mom, I think, was like four years old. Mm -hmm. And so I've always had my Dutch blood. <laughs> Your Dutch blood. And and in Holland, the that's really where the wooden shoe came from because it was right. so wet there mm -hmm. and leather just wouldn't work. Is that, is that yeah. right? Well, they still use them. They still use they them. Still the do. Wood. Last time I was there, farmers were still wearing them. Farmers are still wearing them. So ha did you wear those much, Tootie? No, or you just have to look at them? No, I just look at it. I bought a pair in Holland to okay. wear in the yard. Okay. I was going to be that Dutch farm girl. That's right. And she painted on them, and they're so pretty I couldn't wear them in the yard. Oh. Well, <laughs> show your pretty painted ones that came from Holland to Michigan. Oh, Please. yes, yes. Looky there. With what? Well, pull them up higher, Tootie. We don't have it in the My picture. My feet are these. <laughs> oh, they are pretty. They are pretty. Well, I'm probably glad I don't live in Holland because I work out in the yard a lot too, and I don't think I could do it either, Caroline. Oh, I think I could wear them, mm -hmm. but um, after she painted on them, they were just too lovely to too, tear up. Too pretty to do something to. I yeah. understand. I understand. Now, back in the day, in, in old Europe, that wasn't just a Dutch thing. Honest. Because I've seen, they're called sabots, but I've seen those in uh, French museums too. So. Uh, a lot of people wore a, a wooden cloggy type shoe. Ah, ah. Well, Caroline mentions the French Museum. She has a special passion for uh, France, has ever since high school. And you make a yearly trip to France, is that correct? Did till this year. Did till this yeah. year. <laughs> the virus kind of kept that from happening. Yeah. Okay. Is there good shoe shopping in France? Well, yes. And here's. Here's why, in Europe in general though. So this is this is a pair of shoes I bought in 1995, four, five, three, somewhere okay. around there. First time I went to Europe with my best friend, met her over there, she wanted to go to France, and I could still wear these. And part of why I can still wear these and why I love to buy shoes in France is that they're wider over there. Honest. Yes. So um, I kind of wear a seven and a half to an eight mm -hmm. in a white shoe, mm -hmm. eight to eight and a half in an American shoe. So um, it's really kind of interesting how they are a little bit more focused on comfort <laughs> than we are here, I think. Huh. Uh, but yeah, so so these are old and I still can wear them even though they're heels and they're kind of miserable. It's a couple hours. Right. Well, we so. see most women, well, I, yes, I would say most women that we see out and about are, are into comfort here in the United States. Is that true in France? Or yeah. do you... more, more, well, no. Okay. In the country, yes. But it, like in Paris, I see women wearing you know these beautiful little high heel pumps mm -hmm. walking. And they walk everywhere. And I think, oh, honey. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. But no, in, in Paris, they wear their heels. Still fashion is uh, the number yeah. one thought. Oh, oh, you've got some really pretty red ones there. So the pretty red ones, um, so when mom broke her back, I didn't have much to do other than love on her, and my favorite dress store is a catalog also, and they had these in their catalog. 
So uh, these are the ones I can only wear with pantyhose because they didn't have exactly the size I wanted. Oh. So I kind of sit between two sizes. So I also have a green pair of these. Mm -hmm. which was my first pair mm -hmm. and then I loved him so much I got these and then one of my friends that has had breast cancer told me I needed the pink pair to wear in October so I actually have three pair of these the same shoes. shoes but I love them oh. I love them and I wear them with dresses it's my right my uh, exchange for the high heels so oh they're yeah. lovely they are lovely and I understand that thing about buying several pair once you find a pair that you like the way they look and they fit I remember when I first started working at Bogstown and I had to dress up and make business calls because I was the salesperson. And I wanted comfortable shoes, so I bought pumps with about a two and a half inch heel. And they fit good, they look good, and I bought a navy blue pair and a black pair because that would go with both of my, most of my clothes. The first night home from out making sales calls and I felt so important, I carried a briefcase and everything. I got home to take my shoes off and all day long I had worn one navy blue shoe and oh. one black shoe. <laughs> that is a true story. So, so you probably won't get the green and pink and red ones mixed up on those, Caroline, but oh. just when you're slipping them on in the morning, but yeah. I, I understand that. Well, Caroline uh, is a nurse. Should we talk about these? Oh, nurses? I'm sorry. Go ahead and talk. I'm sorry. That's okay. So Interrupt me. That's okay. I brought these because some of the folks might have actually encountered these shoes before. Would you walk? Life. Would you stand up and walk close to the camera so I'd we can see those to. closer too? Oh, perfect. So these were my great grandmother's, my dad's mother. And when I was about, what, nine, 10, I wore these in the Fairline Parade. I dressed up like an old pioneer lady and I wore these in the Fairline Parade. Oh. And um, I can still get these on, but I don't wear them just because I don't want to tear them up. Oh. I used to have them out in my house as a, a, a decorative item until I had a dog that thought they were pretty spiffy, so now they, they're put away. I understand. So how old are those shoes? Well, I don't know. They're, they're Bill's grandmother. Yeah, Bill's grandmother. Yeah. So. Wow. She. she We're did, talking 1800s yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe Ooh. even the turn of the century, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's been a minute. Absolutely. They, they got like the steel toe in there. And they're leather shoes. They're leather. Oh yeah. Pays pays Bill's to buy leather. good shoes. Yeah. That's something that has always always rung true. Yeah always run true. Oh, I'm glad you stopped me, Caroline. They were sitting around the corner and I'd forgotten you told me about those. So those are, those are cool. Uh, but you've got some other shoes over there yeah, besides so, you. So Show us these. These poor things are my work shoes. And um, they're pretty battered. And as a matter of fact, the hospitals decided we don't have to wear white anymore. But um, for me, it's kind of a symbol of how much I've worked. These are pretty awful. When I started out, I started wearing the old clinics and they were like the nurse shoes and I loved those, but uh, they're not as comfortable as these things are. Mm -hmm. uh, these are Birkenstocks and I really resisted because they're, they're not gorgeous, but they're German and they're wide. <laughs> and um, I got a bone spur and a friend of mine at work said, oh, get a pair of those. They'll fix it right up. And they did. The bone spur's been long gone and so I still wear these things. And this is probably my last pair because I hope to retire in a year. Oh, so. goodness. Well, I hope you get to, too. But Birkenstocks, and it helps get rid of your bone spur. That's yep. quite interesting yep. because foot surgery is never any fun. So yep. if you can figure out another way around that. These mold, you get these, and they're not the best to your foot, but as you wear them, they mold to your foot. And the bone spur was just like right here mm -hmm. and gone. How cool. And that's been about 15, 20 years Wow. This is not the pair to fix my shoe. <laughs> sure. You've had a couple of pairs since, couple then. since then. Half a couple. Can you think of any other shoe stories that you want to share with me before I... Not really. Uh, Judy, you told me you wore Anya shoes. Anya had to be Anya. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, where did you go purchase your Anya shoes? Usually Ayers or used to be Lazarus. Uh, that bucket one place you could get them. Right. So, right. I, yeah, I just thought they had, they, that was all I could wear. Yeah. <laughs> and they were comfortable because, you know, I worked at school where I was on my feet all the time. Right. So I had to have comfortable shoes. 
right? Mother liked them because they carried narrow ones that were still styly. Sometimes you can't get narrows and wides in styly mm -hmm. things. And she always, she always liked them. How about you, Caroline? Any other fun shoe story you can think of? Not really. Yeah. You don't, you didn't wear two different colors or anything like that. <laughs> Never worn two different okay. colors. No. Okay. Okay. Well, I was talking to Caroline when she so graciously agreed to do this too. And it's so neat to have mom and daughter uh, to, to be with us here today on our little segment. But uh, Caroline works uh, at St. Francis Hospital with the Center of Hope. And um, I asked her if there was any advice she had for us, being someone in the medical community that's had to live really with this pandemic every day uh, in, a, in a more real fashion than most of us who were at home watching it on television. Yeah, so I work at, my program is located in the emergency department. So I've been kind of right in the middle of watching this whole thing unfold. Um, I think the most important thing is wear your mask because you protect everyone around you when you do that. Uh, we're, we're filming this outside maskless because it's okay to be outside. At least that's what the science says now. It's just when you're inside, wear a mask. Um, whether it's just you and another person or you and a whole group of people. Uh, that said, if you have chest pain, stroke symptoms, please come to the hospital and get taken care of. The hospital's done a really good job of protecting me as an employee and trying to protect our patients. Um, we have, like the ER's got a hallway that's just specifically dedicated to COVID so that those people aren't out in the rest of the hospital uh, or the rest of the emergency department. And then um, we've moved back from, I, I think, we've moved back from being cohorted, which means just one floor that's all COVID patients, to moving all these patients back into um, special rooms that have ventilations, especially for, um, for isolation patients. So it's, a, it's as safe as it can possibly be, and there's no point in dying at home from a heart attack. Good point. When you're afraid to go to the hospital. So come to the hospital, get the care you need. Um, we, will, we will take care of making sure you don't get sick from this. Oh, good point, good point. I think fear is such a motivator. Um, and not always motivating us in the right direction sometimes. And we are bombarded with so much information. It's hard to decipher what's true, what's fact, what I should do, shouldn't do. So it's nice to hear uh, from somebody from the medical community that uh, if you got something going on, don't sit at home and worry about it. Take your precaution, wear your mask in, tell them what's going on. And, and hospitals are still there to fix people that are sick with other things besides besides this virus. So, well, Tootie, I've had so many people tell me that they've missed you and we all miss you. And it's been so good to sit and, and visit with you a little bit today and, and see your shoes and talk about your Holland shoes. And, and to have Caroline here has been a, an, an extra perk. So uh, I know that everybody's still trying to decide whether they want to come back to the senior center or not. As I tell everyone, I don't want you to feel pressure about that whatsoever. Do what you believe you need to do to stay safe for yourself. Senior Center is going to be there six months from now, 12 months from now. It's going to be back. And well, I might not be. <laughs> uh, oh, don't say that, Judy. You know, that's a good point, though. People have worried about that. I know that. And no, it's I'm so hard. Joking. It's so hard to balance. No, I, I spoke with a friend that lives away from here that used to come to church once a month. And, and she said to me, you know, I'm worried that I may not. You know, she's 90. Mm -hmm. I, I'm worried that I may not see my friends. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're but they were like family. So they are like family, them. and I know you've been keeping in contact with those family since then. So, Tootie's phone number, if any of you need it, call me. <laughs> <laughs> I won't give it out. And if you see her and Betty out on their, is it the first and third? First and second. First Monday. and second Mondays of the month, delivering meals on wheels. Toot your horn and wave big at all of them. And when you're driving into London or take a special trip, and drive past Tootie's house and just look at this beautiful nature 
uh, that she has surrounding her that she's so lovingly taking care of. I know that's feeding her soul while we're not out with one another being able to do that as much. And uh, thank you for being such a great example and a good friend, Tootie, and for talking shiz with me today. <laughs> so thank you to Caroline. You're See you later. Well, folks, I hopped in my car and I head up to Westfield, Indiana to make a little music with Robin. But I thought what a nice treat it would be for all of you to get to meet his wife, Susan. This is Susan Hopkins. Susan and Robin have been married 41 years this year. That's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Look at you. But even even longer than that, Susan just retired from uh, PNC Bank after almost 45 years. And that was 45 years of wearing high heels most every day, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I, I've not known Susan that many years, but anytime I ever saw her dressed up to go any place, she had on the styliest, most high-heeled, pretty shoes to match everything she had. And uh, and since you've retired, you you what did you do with all those beautiful <laughs> shoes? Well, um, a lot of them just went by the wayside, mm -hmm. and hopefully, there um, someone else might be enjoying them. Ah, as well. Okay. Um, but um, I always loved shoes. Always did. Mm -hmm. But I kind of suffer now from. <laughs> All those high, high heels. Yep. So now all the heels are just about like this. Right, so, right, yes. right, right. And so and so now, Robin, she's closer to your height, right? Because Susan's very <laughs> tall. I'm just teasing you, small. <laughs> no, now, come on. Uh, oh, that's fun. So, but you, put a, you pulled a few pair of your retirement shoes out to show us to die susan i did yes so now we have the flat the flat <laughs> <laughs> now they're still stylish yes they are yes but much much flatter now yes so. and much more comfortable yes yes, yes. yes. so this is kind of a dressy yes it is shoe now <laughs> so <laughs> very good hoppy um Vanna White's better than you are. <laughs> yes. You want me to go on? Yeah, go okay. on, sure. And just for casual. Yes. You Enough. can't get any more casual than this. Yes. So, and they're know. memory foam. Oh, yes. Memory foam. Just oh, like yes. you're stepping on a cloud. So, very nice. If I want to take a walk around the block, I can just slip these on real quick. And, and away you go. And just take a short walk. That's right. That's so. right. That's I do right. love those. Yes. And of course, just for casual, yes. I do have just some sandals. Yes. So, and like I said, it's just pretty flat all the time now. Yeah. So, but yeah. they're still quite styly, just yes. like they're Susan is. An Indian is. motif, I would say. Yeah. An Indian motif, yes. So, now, it's lots of fun. Yes. They're lots of fun. Lovely shoes, for but, sure. And Hop, you're over there rolling your eyes. Oh, me? <laughs> but, but I know you. <laughs> And I know that you've always loved shoes. Your mother loved shoes. Your dad loved shoes. And I so love shoes. you pulled a few of yours out to show us today, too, didn't you? I did. Okay, show me a couple. I did. Well, first of all, um, <laughs> most of my shoes are, were, are basically for the entertaining. So this was the basic shoe if I needed to wear a tux. Yes, your tux et cetera, shoe. Et cetera. And also, it's the correct size to, to put my new, I had my taps, my tap shoes, I outgrew. So <laughs> I had to have a pair of shoes to hopefully one day put them on these shoes. Oh, we're going to take tap dance and again, are we? Know. You never know. You never know. That's right. That's and right. So then uh, I've been wearing these quite often. My other love, my mother loved two tones. And so I had to have a, have a, a pair of two tones called these are called Broad Streets from Allen Edmonds. They're lovely. And uh, I've had these for since now, oh, 96 maybe. I don't know, yep. 95, somewhere in that Good range. shoe. Good shoe. Yep. 
And, yes. And uh, of course, I had a white suit, which of course I had to have a pair of white shoes. So here's my white suede shoes. Am I going too fast? No, me? you're quite <laughs> fox. <laughs> He's teasing. And, He's teasing. And of course, uh, it, I do have to have casuals. Uh, so here's my here's my loafer, mm -hmm. and uh, a one special sh boot. I used to wear cowboy boots probably for ten years mm -hmm. of uh, the mid seventies to the mid eighties, maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. Ten fifty, I had everything from lizards to whatever. <laughs> ah. But they've and gone by the wayside. They, they had gone by the wayside, and I had been hoping for another pair of boots. And I, my father, when he passed away, I was able to wear his, his boots, and these were his. So I get to have a wear a piece of him every day, which I really love. That's cool. And of course, um, that's cool. I had to have a pair of black shoes that would be a little more casual. <laughs> but still dressy. So I've, I've worn <laughs> these many times on stage. Yes. And so these are called Fort Lauderdales and they've got the they little weave, woven part got, on got the got side. The weave, and I love these a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like anyone, if you love a pair of shoes enough, you have to buy another color. <laughs> <laughs> so, Absolutely. So I had, uh, I had love these too. So Absolutely. Uh, we, ju we just talked to Tootie Fisher. And Tootie talked about buying shoes in the same uh, color when you find a pair that you really like. So oh. see, it's for guys it's and girls, mm -hmm. folks. And, yep. uh, you know, these these are all Alan Edmonds, except for the boots. But the, my, my dad always said, you get, get good shoes. And I've had these, most of these shoes I've had over 20 years. Yep. And even longer, so... Yep. He yeah, likes he likes right. to look at shoes and I'll tell I'll tell a tale on him. When he was getting well in the hospital, you probably have heard this story, mm -hmm. Susan, too. He I was talking to him one day and and he said, I'm thinking about buying a new pair of shoes. And I, I said, Why? <laughs> he yes. said, Because I'd like to have I think I'd like to have them and they were blue. Well, either blue suede or tan suede or green suede. I couldn't really yeah. make that one mine because yeah. I liked them all, but I could not possibly afford all of them. Blue blue suede shoes, and, mm. and he never did buy them, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, yes? Yes, one more point is I got it all honestly because my mother competed with Imelda Marcos, I believe. <laughs> how many shoes did your mom I have? I don't know how many she had, but it was, it was a bunch. Yeah. Do you have any idea? Now, um, it was probably close to about maybe over 70 yeah. at least. And, I, and the shame was she had a little tiny foot, right? Mm -hmm. But she kept all of her shoes in the same box. That they came in? Yes. Wow. She had like one room Wow. that had all her shoes and she always kept them in the, in the original box. <sighs> Well, I guess you get oh, it, it honest, Robin. Yeah. I guess you get it <laughs> honest. But I want to talk about one more pair of shoes that Susan has out here. Uh, you know, we've talked about Robin and his health uh, struggles the last year or so, but Susan had some herself a couple of years ago. She was a, a breast cancer patient, and she's a, a survivor, a clear survivor now mm -hmm. for two years. Two Is that years. right? Two, two, two and a half years. Two and a half years, and we're we're thrilled about that. And and when Susan was first starting her chemo treatment, Robin and I had a friend from the jazz kitchen, a dancer, whose daughter at 26 had had breast cancer, and her best friend had wanted to give her something to wear when she went to chemo that would make her feel just like she was super empowered and she was going to, wow, just take on the world and kick cancers. I won't say that word. This is a family show, but that was the whole plan. And and show them a picture of the shoes that uh, Lauren's friend gave her. Look at those, those great big high heels. Well, uh, this young lady wore them every chemo treatment that she had, and she's cancer free today too. And she and her friend at that time, it's been several years ago, they started a little company called Healing Heels. And they gave women that had recently been diagnosed with cancer, 
these wonderful blue shoes and Susan got a pair of them too. I Look at did. this. I did. Are those not cool? They were a little more practical for yeah. the over 40 See, woman. The, the, flats <laughs> the flat. Here. The flat. But uh, they've the got little here. spikes on them and But aren't those beautiful? Yeah. Beautiful shoes. And so. what a what a fun fun thing and yeah. each one of them came with a note that was mm -hmm. written uh, especially from uh, the owners of the company and it was just neat. So I asked uh, Susan to share that little note that they they wrote with her. I have to get my read readers on here. So. That's okay. all right. We all do. We all do. Okay. To our soul sister. S-O-L-E. <laughs> These may look like a pair of shoes. But trust us when we tell you they are so much more. They are a reminder of just how strong you are. And we hope you wear them to each treatment as a reminder that you are unstoppable. In these shoes, you will kick cancers <laughs> behind. Okay. <laughs> because... In the night, oh, in the right pair of shoes, you can do anything. The story starts with these shoes, but continues with you. And we can't wait to see the story you tell. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? So handwritten by these gals yes. and and they went on for many years doing blue shoes. So if you've got a friend, that's kind of a neat idea. Uh, the healing shoes. And so they, they sparkle. And yeah. they do sparkle. They do. They do. And they're also they're kind of pointy here. That's so right. They're pretty sharp too. Yeah, got to be careful. So you don't want her wearing those and getting mad at nope. you, Hop. Huh? <laughs> no. So. <laughs> Anyway, well, you know, you didn't order those blue suede shoes, but that does give me another trivia point about blue suede shoes. It was the number one song ever written about shoes. I think that it may be time to get that banjo out. What do you think? I think so. Okay. One for the money, two for the show, three to get ready now. Go, cat, go, don't you. Step on my blue suede shoes. Oh, you can do anything but lay off of my blue suede shoes. Where you can knock me down, step in my face, slander my name all over the place. Do anything you want to do. But, ah, uh, ah, uh, honey, lay off of my shoes and don't you step on my blue suede shoes. You can do anything but lay off of my blue suede shoes. Here we are, and I knew I would not be disappointed if I visited Don Rayburn. He's got two pair of blue suede shoes sitting right there next to him. How are you today, Don? 
I'm good. I'm good. I'd say you're good. Looky there, folks. See? Blue suede shoes, and I bet you still wear those babies, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're more <laughs> of a wintertime shoe. They're kind of heavy for summertime, but they're... But right. This is my summertime blue suede shoes here. Yes. <laughs> haven't had any place to go wear them this no, summer, no. have we? No, I have we? Well, we're always teasing yeah. girls about their... Uh, love of shoes and things, but then I just finished talking with Robin and kind of spilled the beans on him that he's <laughs> he's loved shoes too. And I remember you walking into seniors all the time. I remember those red ones. I know you wore your oh, red I've shoes worn them a lot up there. several times. I've had those several years. They really are getting kind of rough looking. But... Yeah, but they're pretty. They're pretty. And your rusty color ones here are uh, more of a fall kind of yeah, shoe. Yeah, that's, that's a fall shoe. Tell me about this mauve one. That's really quite unusual. You know, I think I bought, I bought that at a garage sale on Shovelville Road, just outside of Shovelville, just as you go out of town, someplace for two or three dollars. And I know that the wife bought them for the husband, and he refused to wear them. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a, you know, and I've worn them quite a bit, but I, bet I don't you... wear them out because I don't wear them on a weekly basis. You know. Yeah, I... you got a shirt that color, I bet. Oh yes. Yeah. I... And most of these shoes came from either a garage sale or, or, goodwill. or goodwill because you are a goodwill shopper and you're always coming up with gems, right? Yeah, yeah, Speaking yeah. of gems, grab that pair at the very end there. Um, <laughs> if you were at our Halloween party last year, uh, you guys have seen this one before. This is kind of a, a platformy kind of tennis shoe. It is gold and uh, it, it lights up. I don't know if we'll see the lights up on it out here in the light or not. Oh, there we go. How about that? Is that dandy or what? Now you have to be honest with me, Don. Have you ever wore those any place except at our <laughs> Halloween party? <laughs> okay. No. Well, and you only pay three or four dollars for them. You don't. You, have to, you, it can be a costume shoe. It can be a costume shoe. Yeah, I can leave the green on and wear them with green. I can leave the blue on and wear them. You know, but I don't because I, I just thought, wow, and I didn't <laughs> even know until I got home with them that I could do that. Uh, well, they they are fancy. The they they said that that what we know as a platform shoe today was a takeoff of a shoe that was in the 16th century that was a tall shoe like that. And um, I guess that um, the prostitutes were known to wear those shoes. Some of them were as high as two feet because I guess they hung out in doorways and the taller the shoe, the better chance you had to be seen. Now, if they'd had a pair like this that had a flashing light on them too, yeah. uh, I don't know, <laughs> they probably would have even that job off, drawn like more is. attention. Oh, that's fun. That's fun. Now they're, now they're stopped. And then down here on the on the ground, you've also got some of that I know I've seen you in. Yeah, uh, because I love this color red. That's my favorite color red, cranberry red. Uh, that is pretty. And, uh, and you notice white, all tennis shoes anymore are very popular with white shoes. It used to be soles didn't make any difference. Right. But, I notice on TV so many men wearing soles with white, you know, shoes with white soles on them. So I noticed that two years ago at Christmas time, and I thought, well, that'll get dirty. Nobody needs a white sole, yeah, but I they, bought them for the grandkids because yeah. that's what they wanted. So yeah. that's an interesting one. And they're interesting because they don't lace up, but they have laces on them. But it's a stretchy shoe that you just stretch on. Slip and, on. And there's no reason to tie them up, so I never put laces in them. <laughs> That's odd. How about this white pair? That's kind of it's a unique. Broad sale, interesting because I thought they were interesting shape, and they're just kind of certain thing to wear with certain colors. Uh, but they're a nice shoe, and when you can buy a fifty dollar pair of shoes for three dollars, they don't care. You know. I guess that's don't right. Don't make any difference how often you wear them. Uh, I. That's right. You I've only your... worn them maybe four times since I've had them. Uh, you're getting your goodie out of them. You're getting your goodie out of them. Well, um, I think when I talked with Tootie, we talked and the trivia question was, how many pairs of shoes does the average girl have in America? And it was 19. And you have more than 19 pairs of shoes though, don't you, Don? Yeah. 
that's all right. So do I. <laughs> yeah. I may have that many more pair upstairs besides the nine pair I got down here. I don't even try to keep count of them. I love it. I love it. I love it most that you're so so thrifty when you purchase them oh, and yes. you're getting the goodie out of something that somebody else says, nah, I don't need this anymore. And a color to go with everything for <laughs> sure. So speaking of a color to go with everything, you've got colors to go with everything in this yard too and uh, at the end of this segment folks i'm going to take you on a little trip through don's day lilies and i'm sure that your offer is still open anybody that wants to come by and take well, a look at all these beautiful things you've got pretty stuff blooming now too don't you look, walk around and enjoy them uh, yes what they're here for not going very many places that you can take bouquets to right now so it's no, enjoying no. them in the yard I take one to Greenville whenever I go over there, and I haven't been over there this week, but I I will go one day this week. I'll go to Greenfield and then take some things to the Antique Mall. Mm -hmm. And I take to the chiropractor, whatever I take to church on Sunday, I take to my chiropractor on Monday morning, and they can enjoy them all. Oh, well, that's very nice. That Good thinking. Out. You always figure out how to give. Yes, you do. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving me time and having a pair of blue suede shoes for me. <laughs> and uh, I guess I will see you sometime at the Senior Center. I uh, hope to see you Thursday. All righty. Thanks, Don. Mm -hmm. See you soon. Oh, Don, thank you for showing us all of your favorite shoes. After you told me you had about 20 pair, I was curious and I thought, I wonder how many shoes I really have. And so I came home and I got in my closet and I have to say I'm quite embarrassed about how many pairs of shoes I have. How many pairs I absolutely can't wear, don't need to wear. Um, so I'm kind of purging too. I've got my Goodwill sack started and uh, there's some things I'm going to put in there. Not any of these, but I have some. And oh, Robin, I found our tap shoes. Ah. <laughs> And I don't think either one of us is going to tap anymore. So we're going to put those in the Goodwill shoes. I have a few more special ones that I'm going to pass to, to Gracie Mae. And I've got to save a few for Lorelai to play dress up. But I haven't started anything by doing that with Lorelai because it's already begun. Here's Lorelai's little Mary Janes. Aren't they cute with a little black bow on the side? And this is her absolute favorite pair of shoes. History is going to repeat itself, I think so. I think so, at least where shoes are concerned. <laughs> I hope you've had fun with our little shoe talk today. I hope you'll hang around for a few more minutes and take a trip with me through Don's Day Lily Patch. They were absolutely beautiful. Now, I know some of you've got some of those snazzy gardening boots. You could slip those on while we take this little short tour. Or better than that, let's throw caution to the wind and go barefoot. I'll see you next week. <laughs>